Praise the Lord, family. God bless you and welcome back from uh, a weekend I want to call a weekend of thanksgiving, but even more so a weekend of thanks living. And uh, we, 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 we spoke a lot about thanksgiving last week and how thanksgiving should not be an event, but it should be a lifestyle. And so regardless of what we're going through, we should be able to thank God because that is what the Bible says, that in all things, we must thank God. And so I thank God for this afternoon. I thank God for your life. I thank God for your family. I thank God for what God is doing in your life. And I thank God for what God is getting ready to do even in your life. This week, we're going to start a whole new series I want to call A Better Me. A Better Me is only going to happen when we begin to take inventory of our life. A Better Me is only going to happen when we take stock of our lives. And so this week, I'm going to take time to talk about various aspects of our life that we can navigate just to figure out whether we are the right place, we are where we are supposed to be, in terms of God's purposes and his assignment for us even in this season. So I welcome you this afternoon as you join. I want you to share our pages, if you will, and uh, invite somebody, get your friends, your family to be part of what God is getting ready to do with us this afternoon as we receive his word and enter into a time of prayer. Welcome this afternoon to Midday Connection. Grace and peace to you. It's always a joy to have you here. I want to start off with a scripture in the book of uh, Psalms and uh, Psalm 90. I want to read the first 12 verses. This is a psalm written by Moses, the great leader of the nation of Israel. And uh, this scripture, Moses is talking about taking stock of our lives. And the reason why we got to take stock of our life is so we could improve and even do more and do better as the days goes by. You know, Bible says that anyone who becomes a weather watcher will never sow. Anyone who watches the wind will never sow. That is what the Bible says. It means when you become a weather watcher, you will not do the things God has ordained for you to do. If you are waiting for the best of seasons, and this year has been a unique year. If you were a weather watcher, you wouldn't have done anything I want to believe because there are so many unpredicted things that have happened this year. Talk about Corona. If, you were, if that scripture was being written this year, the scripture would have read, anyone who watches coronavirus will not pursue their life, will not pursue their destiny. Now listen to me, child of God. When you are a child of God with the mandate of God over your life, there is nothing that is happening in this realm that must stop you from doing the very things God has ordained for you to do in any particular season. Think about Joseph. Bible says in his days, everybody around him was a weather watcher. And you know what weather watchers do? They watch the weather and based on what the weather says, they pursue their destiny. And so Bible says in his days, the weather had a forecast that there wasn't going to be rain anytime soon. Bible says there was farming in the land. The Bible says because of that, everybody began to go down. When the weather becomes the reason why you take a step in life, you only go down. Read the expression in the book of Genesis. Bible says everybody began to go down into Egypt. When you walk away from God's direction because of what the environment, because of what the political system, because of what the news says, you begin to make movement based on what you are hearing on the news, you only go down. Any, whether you go north, south, east, west, out of the presence of God, it only leads to down. Bible says everybody began to go down to Egypt. But God came to Isaac and said, no, you are not a weather watcher. I want you to stay in the land. And in fact, I want you to take your faith to the next level. Even though there is no rain, I want you to do things that you would normally do when there is rain. When there is rain, we sow. 
And God says, that is what I want you to do because you're a step of faith. Anytime God speaks to us, Bible says faith without works is dead. And so when God speaks a word to us, it is a word of faith. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are life and they are spirit. Please understand, spirits never die. There is no spirit that dies. A spirit cannot die. And so any word you speak into your future is waiting for manifestation. There is no word you speak based on the word of God that will die. It is the reason why God says that my word shall not return unto me void. There are spiritual words that cannot be killed. They cannot die. That is why God said not a single jot of my word will fall to the ground. Child of God, the word of God that proceeds out of our mouth will not die because it is spirit. Glory to God. As the Bible says, Isaac stayed in the land. He did exactly what God told him to do. He put seed in the ground. He was not watching the wind and waiting for rain to put a seed on the ground. He did what every weather watcher will not do. There are a lot of people that are waiting for the coronavirus to end before they do the things God told them to do at the beginning of the year. And that is why we got to take stock of our lives. Have we done what God told us to do? God impressed it on your heart to do certain things regarding ministry. God told you certain things you must do this year regarding the talents, the skills, the abilities, the spiritual gifts he placed in you. Are you like the man who was given one talent who said because of the coronavirus, I don't want to get in trouble with my master. So he dug the ground and hid the talent. A lot of us have hidden our talent because of coronavirus. But God knew there would be coronavirus this year before he told you at the beginning of the year what you must be doing. Listen, our God is Jehovah Omniscient. Omniscient simply means he knows what is going to happen. He has all the full detail of what is going to happen tomorrow. We like that, but he doesn't like that because he's Jehovah Omniscient. He's all-knowing. As a coronavirus, the presidential election or the economy, the unemployment and all the many things that are happening around us must not impact us. Please remember, we are in this world, but the Bible says we are not of this world. Our economy doesn't operate based on the economy of this world. And so our pursuit, our destiny, and the things we are required to do has nothing to do with the things that are happening in this realm. And that is why we must take stock. Because God is seeking tomorrow. You know, every single day must make us brighter. Every single day must make us into a better person. And that is why this week we're talking about a better me. Paul said, daily I examine myself. He said, when I even come around and preach to you folks, you know what I do? I go back and make sure what I'm preaching to you, I've also preached it to myself. Because if I don't, after I've preached to you, I will become a castaway. So I want to read a piece of scripture to you as we proceed because God wants you and I to take stock of our lives. What have we done with our financial destiny? What have we done with our spiritual destiny? What have we done with our marital destiny? And you know, as the year comes to an end, especially around this time, you'll be amazed to know many businesses are taking inventory around this time. And there is a reason why they do that. Many businesses are taking stock of the activities. Some are writing reports of how the year has been. Some companies do it even every quarterly. But as a child of God, you are the most expensive commodity on this earth. You are the most expensive asset on this earth. Bible says, how can you gain the whole world and lose your soul? What that simply means is that your soul is more expensive as compared to all the wealth of this world put together. You are the most expensive thing God dropped on this earth. And if people with inexpensive companies are taking inventory of the activities, it is about time you did the same with your life. And that is why we're talking about a better me. Look at what Moses says in the book of Psalms. And I'm reading Psalm 90. Verse 1 all the way to verse number 
12. But what I really want to talk about is in verse 12, but let's read on. It says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. And like a watch in the night, you carry them away like a flag. They are like, uh, like uh, asleep. In the morning, they are like grass, which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cast down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger and by your wrath, we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are 70 years. And if by any reason of strength they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. And this is what I love. Verse 12. He says, So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Are we numbering our days? November is just ending. And we are going right into December, the very last month of the year. Are we numbering our days? Are we fulfilling divine assignment? Are we doing the very things God called us to do? God knew everything we could use as an excuse in this season before he ushered us into this season. Listen, everything you had in your heart to do this year, God inspired you. Some of you wrote it down that this is what I have prayed about. God is inspiring me to do this year concerning ministry. This is what God is telling me to do concerning my family, concerning my marriage, concerning that business, concerning that career. I must tell you that a lot of people, a lot of businesses are prospering because of the coronavirus. So we cannot use any of these things as children of God as an excuse not to do the things God has called us to do. Instead of that, we got to be asking God, which way should I do it in the face of this many challenges? The Bible says there is always a way out. And so this afternoon, as we begin this great teaching of a better me, I wanted to pray and say, God, open my eyes to take stock of my life. From January all the way, into November. Now we're going into December tomorrow. God, teach me, show me what I'm missing and what I'm supposed to do. This morning in our morning prayer, God inspired me with a word. He said, he will crown our years. He will crown this year. It means that there is a glory of God that must come down as the year ends. It means that whatever God has promised us concerning this season must come to pass. So wherever you are listening to me, I want you to pray with me and say, Lord, open my eyes, open my heart. What have I missed? What are the accomplishments to your glory? And listen to me, child of God, I want you to take pen and paper, take a look at the things you wrote down at the beginning of this year that you said, this is what God is inspiring me to do or this is what I want to do. And listen to me, don't wait for 2021 to make it your new agenda. Start today if you are missing out on anything. You still have 31 days left in this year. You can still begin it and don't wait for a new season to now reframe the things God said were for this year. Come on, listen to me, child of God. Next year is coming with so much in it for you. Lift your hands and say, Lord, help me. I need your grace. Open my eyes. Lord, open our eyes that we may see where we missed it. Lord, show us the things that have been accomplished even to your glory. And Lord, grant us the grace that we will fulfill the assignment, the things you called us to do in 2020. Lord, coronavirus is not an excuse. Lord, the election is not an excuse. The unemployment is not an excuse. The homelessness is not an excuse. For Lord, we remember even John on the island of Patmos 
when he was beaten, when he was stricken and thrown onto an island that was lifeless with snakes and scorpions, that is when he began to write the book of Revelation. The island of Patmos was not an excuse. The snakes were not an excuse. The scorpions were not an excuse. Lord, even the beatings he received, the stripes that were meted on him was not an excuse. He still opened up and received the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and began to pen down the book of Revelation, which has become an eye-opener and a well-documented documentary for all the body of Christ today to have understanding of the end time. And so it is with us in this season. Lord, we refuse to use anything happening in this realm as an excuse to stop the heavenly agenda you have placed in our heart. Lord, open our eyes to see the things you called us to do this year. Even as individuals, even as fathers, even as mothers, even as parents, may we not give up on the assignment. Lord, place in us like you did with Jeremiah. He said, whatever I refuse to do, the very things you called me to do, it was like fire burning in my bones. Lord, let there be infusion of fire in our bones this afternoon as we pray concerning the things you will have us accomplish in this year. May we not procrastinate anything into the coming season. For Lord, we know and we believe there is so much in store already for us in the coming season. We pray your grace. We pray your grace that you will fill us with that divine ability to accomplish the assignment for this season. That we may become better people even in the kingdom of God. Lord, release your grace upon us. The grace to finish the race. The grace to finish the assignment even for this season. To you be glory. To you be honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord. Listen to me, child of God. You will not be a procrastinator. Regardless of the time constraints, we serve a God that is able to redeem the times. Bible says God can buy back the time that seems to have been lost. And as you walk in that grace in this season, I want you to go back. Take all the things you wrote down for 2020. Begin to look at them and ask yourself, which of these things have I been able to accomplish? Which of them have I done partially? And which one of them have I shelved away because of the many things that are happening? And child of God, I want you to take those things and begin to pray over them and ask God to give you grace. Don't wait for 2021 to start it. Start it now. Hallelujah. If it is school that you said you were going to go to this year and you never even made a call to any school to inquire, I want you to take the phone and ask, make, begin to make calls concerning that school. I can't tell you how many people that have done so much schooling this year because of the coronavirus. School that they never wanted to go, they have been able to accomplish. Yesterday I was watching a documentary on CNN and I saw a boy that had been in prison for 26 years to life because he was an accomplice to a that situation and whilst in prison this young man got a bachelor's degree and two master's degree and as though that wasn't enough he formed a group of prisoners who came together and began to they, they, they work and sometimes they make a salary of one dollar a month they began to put this money together and solicit for funds they were doing fundraising whilst they were in prison from people that were outside and guess what they were using this money to do to grant scholarship to people that were free how come people in prison are doing greater works and people that have freedom are in captivity? This group of prisoners began to put money together and they were financing people into all kinds of colleges to pursue. Listen, there is no prison big enough to imprison your child of God. If there is anything that seems to be a prison, the anointing and the glory of God, like upon Joseph, you will run that prison rather than the prison running you. May that glory of God and grace of God come upon you this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name. Child of God, I love you. It is a season for your better you to come out. And so I look forward to connecting with you same time tomorrow, 12 o'clock, for our midday connection. Grace and peace to you. Shalom.